Hello everyone, uh, welcome to our fourth census video. Uh, it is a very long topic, so we're going to have many more parts, but the good news is we're quite close to being halfway through. So without further ado, uh, let's continue with some examples of census. So an inclinometer, uh, sorry about the ambulance outside if you can hear that, an inclinometer is a sort of sensor that allows the robot to um, infer its current state of balance. So it, it measures its tilt. Um, so let's just type down and being able to measure the tilt of the robot will allow the robot to um, cope with bumps um, and inclines basically. So there's two different types of um, inclinometers, electrolyte sensors, and mercury switch. And let's start with electrolyte sensors. Um, this type of sensor consists of two uh, or more electrodes immersed in conductive fluid. Um, and the, conduct the conduction between these electrodes is a function um, of the orientation of the sensor relative to gravity. So conduction between electrodes function orientation of sensor relative to gravity. And with this conduction, the, um, the sensor produces a signal that's analog and it's proportional to the amount by which the robot is tilted, or you know, the amount by which the, the sensor detects tilt. Um, so yeah, let's type that out. And there is a drawback, which is that the um, that this has increased accuracy compared to a mercury switch but the drawback is that it's more expensive So the pro is that it's more, more accurate. Okay, and the next type of inclinometer is of course the, um, the mercury switch.
So the Mercury switch is effectively a small bulb made of glass uh, and it contains two or more contacts and a drop of mercury. Now this bulb, um, this mercury, depending on the tilt uh, of the robot, will either close the circuit uh, between the, the contacts, so it, it will either um, it will either be hitting both the contacts, or you know one can one contact and another contact, or or it won't be. Uh, so it's basically a binary indication of whether the robot is tilted or not uh, if there's only two contacts of course, if, if there's more um, then you could potentially get more detailed um, so depending on the way the bulb is tilted the mercury drop will as I said close or open the circuit um, so assuming there's only two Contacts. This does mean that it's only a binary sensor for uh, a specific orientation. So either the robot is tilted, let's say 30 degrees, or it's not tilted 30 degrees. Um, or, you know, it is uh, a certain way up, or it is tilted in a certain direction, or it's not, uh, which may be, you know, up or down. Um, so this will most likely require several sensors, uh, several mercury switches at different orientations, or maybe you know many contacts. Um, and also, in this case, you will need to since it's a drop of mercury, the drop can move or it can, you know, be flung up. Uh, so if the robot was bounced, for instance, uh, the circuit may be closed when it's supposed to be open or it may be open when it's supposed to be closed uh, so just to write that down in note form um, So let's write down the um, bouncing example. Okay, um, our next sensor is the accelerometer. These measure linear acceleration. So, uh, effectively, they're taking a look, they're, they're measuring the degree to which the robot is accelerating in a certain direction.
Now the pros of this, well the pro is the um, that it's cheap. There's quite a few cons, including limited degree of freedom, uh, which effectively means the um, it can only measure, you know, in one direction or maybe, you know, a few uh, if you have multiple. Uh, but you know, un unlike a gyroscope, for instance, a gyroscope can measure in all sorts of um, uh, rotational acceleration in all directions. So there's limited degree of freedom. It needs to be integrated. And errors accumulate, uh, which means you know um, there may be you know small errors with certain uh, with each measurement, uh, and but these small errors will uh, you know accumulate. They will add up, uh, and you you might end up with a very uh, erroneous reading. And the need to be integrated is um, ju just what it means. Like it, it needs to be integrated into the robot for it to work properly. Uh, and I guess that's because of um, like it needs to be able to measure some other aspect uh, of the robot, like the movement of the wheels or something, to be able to tell whether it's accelerating or not. Uh, but I'm not one hundred percent sure. Uh, I'll look that up and add it to the description if necessary, if I was wrong then. And gyroscopes are, um, they just measure rotational acceleration. So uh, if, you know, the robot is rotating clockwise or something, or, you know, in any particular direction, it will rotate the rate at which it's accelerating in that direction. Okay, um, that's a bit of a short lesson maybe, but the next subject is very long and I think it might even need uh, a large part of its own video. So I'm going to stop for now, um, but I should have the next topic, which is wheel encoders, up quite soon. So um, thank you very much for watching and listening. I uh, hope you learned something new and have a nice day. Bye bye.